Hello, my name is Varsha Seshan. I'm a children's writer from Pune, India. And today I'm going to be reading a poem that was published in Scoop magazine in their issue 22 on innovation. My poem is called Making a Clone. I think what I need to make life more fun is a twin. Of course, an identical one. I pretend to be her, she'd pretend to be me. But there's no way I can get one, unfortunately. How about a clone? My best friend suggested. We'll get one of those laboratory tested. A clone? I said. That can't be cheap. Or wait, I added as my heart gave a leap. Why don't we make one? That would be fun. We'll keep it a secret until it is done. I'll quickly just tell you a bit about us. We take on new projects without making a fuss. Whatever we think of, we firmly believe. Well, that is something we'll surely achieve. Let's do it, said Ria. How do we start? How does one make a brain and a heart? I looked all around for ideas to strike me. It wouldn't be easy. That was unlikely. Cloth, I suggested. Or cardboard and glue? Yuck, cried Ria. What's the matter with you? We need some ketchup for the colour of blood. For your skin, we will need two kilos of mud. The brain should be soft and bumpy and slimy. Earthworms, perhaps, if they aren't very grimy. Done, I replied. I'll bring what I find. In the meantime, you could, if you don't mind, start drawing out the face. It must look like me. Else there's no point, I'm sure you'll agree. Okra, we found, was perfectly slimy. Sadly, the earthworms were a little too grimy. Tomatoes and ketchup spread over my floor, made a wonderful scene of blood and gore. The brown for the body was potato peels, messy perhaps and slippery as eels. A few hours later, it was nearly done. Such glory, such detail, such magic, such fun. A tomato for a heart, and pencils for toes, shells for its toenails. We didn't leave out those. I looked at the clone, pride in my eyes. The world was in for a super surprise. Just then, I heard the sound of the door. My eyes grew wide as I stared at the floor. Dear God, it struck me with the force of a bomb that our wonderful clone wouldn't impress Mom. With her grown-up lack of love for adventure, she looked with disgust at our brave new venture. Clear up, I whispered, or oh, Mom's going to see the mess in my room and then there will be too much to explain. Oh, what can we do? Relax, said Ria. This looks just like you. She'll see what we're doing and she'll be impressed. Give me a minute and I'll get this thing dressed. Oh, what a shame. Ria was wrong. But soon, my dear mother came traipsing along. She closed her eyes and put her hands on her head. Why are there potatoes and ketchup on your bed? I tried to explain, but it was just no use. I tried several times, for I had nothing to lose. Enough, said my mother. I'll hear nothing more. Clear up the bed and scrub down the floor. Your room is just frightful, a disgusting mess. You have peels in your hair and ketchup on your dress. In 45 minutes, I want to see everything clean. Do you understand me? We nodded and then I heaved a big sigh. Ria shrugged. I think it was still worth a try. It wasn't so easy to satisfy me. I couldn't help saying, quite grumpily, if I don't become a world-famous name in the world of inventions, you know whom to blame. That was Making a Clone, published by Scoop.